Hello, this is Jack Jackson. We're going to be looking at practice test 4A today for college algebra. This test is intended to be done without a calculator, so that's the way we'll be doing it in this uh, video. So uh, I just pulled this up. I just got all my answers marked wrong because I just didn't answer any of them. I just pulled it up so we'd have a key here to look at as we're going. Um, so the first question here, it says choose the graph from the equation that we have. The equation is y equals 2 the x. We pick the graph from the options on the right here and just from the basic shape of an exponential with a base bigger than 1 we know it's it looks like this one right here and not at all like the others. This one up here might be a shifted quadratic, a linear, and then maybe a logarithm here but this one is the only one that looks like uh, like the correct thing here. And of course you could check some points. 2 to the 0 is 1 2 uh, to the first is 2, 2 to the second is 4, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, and so forth. Okay, here we have one with the base less than 1. Okay, now in this case we have uh, just a quick thing. How can you tell an exponential from a logarithm on the graph? Well, remember logarithms are going to have vertical asymptotes, so this is probably a logarithm here. These two right here could be exponentials. This is more like maybe a square root function or something like that. This one here, um, the decreasing kind is when you have a base less than 1 and the power is just x. And this would be a base bigger than 1, so this has to be the right one here. But again, we could check some points. 1 half to the 0 is 1. 1 half to the 1 is 1 half. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 half the negative 1 is 2 and so forth. All right, now this one we can think of uh, transformations here. We can think of y equals 6 to the x, which would be a base bigger than 1, our basic exponential. But when you make it 6 to the minus x, that's going to reflect over the y-axis, so now it's actually a exponential decay. And then when we do y, because um, we replaced x by minus x, now if we go minus y equals 6 to the negative x, or in other words, y equals negative 6 to the negative x, these are the same, then we've reflected it over the x-axis when we change the sign on y, so it's coming up to an asymptote of the x-axis there on the right, and if you look, the one that looks like that is a. And again, of course, we could always check some points. Uh, let's plug in a few points. Uh, 0, the opposite of 0 is 0, 6 to 0 is 1, and then the opposite of that is negative 1. So there's uh, 0, negative 1, which is on the graph there. And then if we plugged in 2, 6 to the negative 2 is 1 over 6 squared, that's 1 over 36, but then it's negative. So there's 1, negative 1 over 36. And uh, let's try negative 1. Neg negative, the opposite of negative 1 is 1, 6 to the 1 is 6, the opposite of that is, is uh, negative 6, so here we have negative 1, negative 6. So, it, again, it checks out with what we have on graph A. Alright, next, um, okay, now we have a logarithm to graph. This is a log base 2 of x. When we have a logarithm that is a base bigger than 1, we're going to have a vertical asymptote here. Uh, on the x-axis coming from below, like this, coming up, so it's increasing concave down. It's going to look like that. Again, we could check some points. Plug in 0, the log base 2 of 0 is 1, so there's 1, 0, uh, or, uh, I'm sorry. You plug in 0, it's undefined. Plug in a negative, it's undefined. Plug in a 1, then you get 0. Log base 2 of x, so log base 2 of, of uh, 1 is 0 because 2 to the power 0 is 1. So that, that goes through uh, uh, 2, 1. Is, so we've got some x's and y's here. Two, uh, um, let me get it right here. 1, 0. 1, 0. Uh, what about 2? So log base 2 of 2 is what? Well, that's my, that's actually my y. And so we're saying 2 to what power is 2? And of course that means y is 1. So it goes through 1, 0, 2, 1. Another nice one would be, another power of 2 would be 4. So log base 2 of 4 is uh, log base 2 of 2 squared. And so the power 
is the answer to. So it goes through 4, 2, and then 8, 3, and 16, 4, and, uh, and so forth. Uh, 1 half, 2, uh, negative 2, like that. 1 fourth, negative 4, etc. One half, let me say that again. 1 half, negative 1. 1 fourth, negative 2. There we go. Because y, 2, this, this, the y is the logarithm, it is the power. And then this is what you get here. Okay, for x. Okay, good. That's that one there. Um, for ln of x, ln of x, of course, is uh, e to the x is basically like that. Reflect over the line y equals x. ln of x looks kind of like this, as do any logarithms when the base is bigger than 1. Of course, ln of x is just another way of saying log base e of x. e is greater than 1. It's 2.7 something. Okay, and so it looks like that. And then when you put the 4 in front, you're replacing y by y divided by 4. So you're really multiplying the y's by 4. And so that's going to just give it a vertical stretch. So now it's going to, instead of this, it's going to be, it's going to cross the axis the same way here, but it's going to be four, four times as tall, well, even more than what I have here. Okay, so let's just check a few. So, uh, well, these all look basically the right shape, but which one has got the right amount of, of uh, stretch to it? So let's check some points uh, here for, for x and y. Uh, of course, e would go to 1. Uh, remember, this is about 2.7. Uh, e square. Now let's see. We've. Uh, I mean, e would. Yeah, e would go to one, and then we would. Ln of e is one, and then times four. So this would be e four. So two point seven comma four. We might see which one fits that. E square. Okay. Now if we just. E square is a little less than. Well, if we just say this is around three, this will be around nine. It'll be a little less than that. Okay. And uh, so we, we uh, take the log of that, we get to 2 times the 4 is 8. So um, let's see what we can have there. And of course, if you put in 1 here, log of 1 is, is uh, 0 times 4 is still 0. So it should go through 1, 0, e, e4, e square, 8. So let's see which one of these would look about right. On the scale that we have, it looks like the one zero is on all of them. So, of course, it would be if they just have different stretches. Now, let's see which one has E4. So, about 3 should be about 4. I think this one looks right. Okay, if you go to about 3, no, not high enough. About 3, too high, definitely bigger than 4. About three too low. So it looks like this one's going to be the right one right here. What's the correct domain of a natural logarithm? Only positive, 0 to infinity. It's a vertical class and to x equals 0. And then the 4 times that just gives a vertical stretch so it doesn't change the domain. Or the vertical asymptote. Find the logarithm. Log base 10 of 10 is uh, the x we're looking for. We're saying 10 to the logarithm to the power x equals 10. Well, obviously the power is 1 there. Okay, similar problem. Log base 4 of 1 16th equals x. We're saying 4 to the x power is 1 16th. Hmm. All right, let's think about it. 16 is 4 squared. So this is 1 over 4 squared, 4 to the x. So x must be negative 2 for that to work out. Okay. Natural log of e, remember this is log base e of e to the first power. Well, when these are the same base, the power is the answer. 
So, in other words, when we're saying natural log of e, we're saying e to what power is e? And, of course, the answer is 1. Similarly, when we say log base 7 of 7 to the 4th, same base here, the power is the answer, 4. 7 to what power is 7 to the 4th? Well, 4. L, ln of e to the negative 4, again, the bases are the same here, so the power is the answer, negative 4. Okay, rewrite this one as a, a logarithm, e squared equals k, so it's log, the base is e, of the k is the, the 2 is the logarithm, it is the exponent. Instead of writing it log base e, we write that as ln. ln of k is 2. This one is backwards. No, it's the same. I'm sorry, it's the same. b squared equals 144. We're saying log base b of the 144 equals 2. By the way, what would B be? Well, in this case, B has got to be 12 because 12 to the second power is 144. All right, here we have 4 to the x and then the inverse, log base 4 of x, and we want to graph them together. Well, just the basics of this, when we have 4 to the x, okay, that's going to be like any logarithm with a base bigger than 1, the asymptote is going to be on the right and it's going to go up this way. I may not have this exactly right, but it is going to go through 0, 1 and somewhere it goes through 1, 4. That's definitely not to scale, but the basic shape is correct. And then its inverse is going to reflect over the line y equals x, so it's going to go down here. It's going to go through 1, 0 and somewhere out here, uh, somewhere out here, 4, 1. So the reflection over the line y equals x. So um, looks like a and b have the right shape for, for the exponential, but only a has the right shape for the logarithm. Okay, this one we're using properties of logarithms, log base 8 of 13x. 13 is a prime number, so we don't need to break it down anymore. And we have a product. And the, a log of a product is a sum of the two logarithms. And of course, this comes from this property of logarithms. It says log base b of, of uh, let's say, m times n is log base b of m plus log base b of n. Well, where does this come from? This is really the same thing as saying if you have two bases and we're multiplying with the, with the same powers, you keep the base and you add the powers. Let me, uh, actually, let me, to get this to match up better, let me actually change this. So this is x, y, and this would be x and y. So this is like the m, and this is like the n. So what are we doing? We're, we are, we're saying if we're multiplying two things, okay, then what are we doing? We're adding what is, what is the logarithm on the product, what is the exponent on the product? It's a sum of the two exponents. So that property allows us to get that for the answer. Um, okay, similar thing here. Log base a of x to the negative 6. Uh, this one has a property when you have a, power, uh, a base to a power. If the bases are the same, it just cancels out. So if you have log base b of b to the x, the base that cancels out and you just get x. But if you have a base here and a uh, let's say a different base let's say a 
to a power, you just get, uh, let's say, a to the n. Let me write that a little bit better. Log base b of a to the n is n times log base b of a. Well, it's that, it's, it's actually that if n is odd. And then if n is even, then it's uh, n times log base b of the absolute value of a is the actual rule. Okay, but on, these t on the test, if they don't say otherwise, we'll probably assume that that the, um, well, actually this one, they have the wrong answer because log base a of x to the negative 6, that's an even power. So it should be negative 6 log base a of the absolute value of x because um, this, for example, is defined for a negative number for x. Let's say this, if you put in negative 1 here, you're going to get negative 1 to the negative 6 power is, is uh, positive 1, and the log of that is 0. And if you don't have the absolute value over here, if you just put in negative 1, log of negative 1 is undefined. So this should be an absolute value, but unfortunately the, the book uh, only wanted, uh, uh, the, the problem here only wanted a, uh, just an x. So actually, they're actually incorrect. If we restrict both sides to being positive x's only, then, then they're, of course, correct. So we have the natural log of the fourth root of 7. Well, that's the natural log of 7 to the 1 fourth power. We write that as a fraction power. Now we can bring that out front, 1 fourth natural log. And again, the um, of 7, that's, uh, that's it. That's how you'd simplify that one. So we're using that property. So this basic property, uh, basically, that, that, that tells us that we can bring this power out front. So if we have a to a power, and we take the log of that, whatever base, the fact that we can bring that power out front, and then it becomes multiplication. This really comes from the property, if you have something to the n power and raised to the m power, you get the same base, and you multiply the powers. So we're multiplying the two powers. One of the powers is our n, but the other power is the, uh, the logarithm. All right, next one, we want to rewrite this one. So we're going to use a combination of these properties. ln of x cubed y to the fifth z. So I'm going to break this into different logarithms because this is a product. So each one gets its own logarithm same base, base E, and uh, if they're all multiplication, this will all be positive 1 for the coefficients. If there was any dividing in here uh, in the denominator, then they would have a negative for the coefficient. Now I'm going to also use the property that says I can bring these powers out front and write this as 3 ln of x plus 5 ln y plus ln of z what they have there. Similar problem for the next one. Log, this is log base 10, square root of b to the fifth c. Well, first of all, I'm going to write this as the uh, one-half power on b to the fifth c. Then we take the log base 10 of that whole thing. Well, I can bring that power up front, so we got one-half the log of b to the fifth c. So it's one-half times this whole thing, so I'm going to put a bracket here. Each of these gets its own logarithm added together, b to the fifth plus log base 10 of c. And then I can take this power and bring it out front. So it's one-half, parentheses, 5 log of b plus log of c, 
and it looks like they're wanting to go ahead and distribute this. So 5 halves base 10 log of B plus 1 half <coughs> base 10 log of C. And I really prefer parentheses here because this is function notation. But it looks like they're, uh, they don't want the parentheses in the way they had it entered there. I don't know if it'll take it the other way or not. Okay. Uh, again, same kind of problem. We're going to log base C. We're going to expand this out. The cube root of x to the fifth over y cubed c to the eighth. So first of all, I think of this as a one-third power. We're taking the log of all of that. And what's inside is x to the fifth over y cubed z to the eighth. We can bring this out, but when we do it becomes multiplication, not a power anymore. So it's one-third times log base c of x to the fifth over y cubed z to the eighth. Now when this is all one fraction and everything's multiplied, maybe uh, the division from the fraction line, but everything in the numerator and denominator are multiplied, then we can break it up into a bunch of logs added or subtracted together. Each factor gets its own logarithm. Log of x to the fifth, log still base c, y, the cu y cubed, still log base c of z to the eighth. The ones in the numerator start with the plus one, the ones in the bottom have a coefficient of negative one, so they're subtracted. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, a couple things. First, I want to move the powers out front. 5 log base c of x minus 3 log base c of y minus 8 log base c of z. Now I'm going to distribute, and this should be my final answer. 5 thirds log base c of x minus 3 thirds, which is just 1. So let's see, we don't have to write that. Uh, just log base c of y. And then minus 8 thirds log base c of z. And again, the book uh, usually leaves out these parentheses here, which kind of irritates me, but that's the way they do it. And it's fairly common practice to do that. And don't forget to use your little symbol palette on the, on the uh, left there to enter those in. Okay, exactly opposite problem here. One-fourth log base C of X plus three log base C of Y minus four log base C of X. So we have exactly the opposite problem. We're going to try to combine this to a single logarithm. First of all, the logs have to have the same base, which we do, so there's some hope we can get this done. But the coefficients have to be one or negative one to put them together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this inside the logarithm, but when it comes inside, it becomes an exponent. So this becomes log base c of x to the one-fourth. This is log base c of y to the third. And then this is um, minus log base c of x to the fourth. Now if the coefficients are all one or minus one and the same base, they're just added together, then we can put it into one single logarithm. Every one that has a plus one for the coefficient goes to the numerator like that and that. And this one with a minus one goes to the denominator, x to the fourth. Uh, these have the same base. Okay, and so I can combine that. Okay, could have done that from the beginning, combine them. But here it's x to the one-fourth minus four. One-fourth is multiply top and bottom by four. That's four, I mean, leave the one-fourth alone. Multiply this one by 4 over 4. It's minus 16 over 4. So that's my power. Uh, 
and that's negative 15 fourths for the power. And that one said to use exponential notation, so that's what they were looking for there with just a power, um, x to power, y to power on the inside, including maybe fraction or negative powers were okay for them. Okay, we will continue this in the next video.